All right, so my name is uh, Jose Rivas. I am a teacher at Lenox Math Science and Technology Academy in Lenox, California. It's in uh, the county of Los Angeles. And I've been teaching for 12 years, uh, 10 years at Lenox Academy, and two years at Roosevelt High School in East Los Angeles. So a lot of the times when students uh, come into my classroom, they don't, they don't understand why they're there. They, so I teach engineering, and they come in, and I can't do this. It's too much math. What am I doing here? Uh, it's too hard for me. And so my job is to show them that they can, and that using math is actually not that painful. And it's actually interesting if you're actually creating things. Um, and so my job is to break it down for them. Uh, a good example is my electronics class. Um, they study electrical engineering. They study programming. And they come in and, oh, I can't do none of this. It's impossible. So the first project that I do with them is just to build their confidence. And we do a simple soldering project. They solder uh, an electronic component together. It's a power supply. And they take about three, four days. They learn how to solder. They put it together. And when they find out that it works, it just, there's a switch that turns on in the hand. They're like, wow, this is actually working. I could actually do this. And I'm like, yeah, all right, so now let's take a look at the math behind it. And they're like, oh, no, it's math. Uh, don't worry. So then we talk about the math. We analyze how this circuit works. And they're like, you know what? That's not that bad. I think I understand what's going on here. All right, good. So let's add another element to this. So then we do simulations. So now my goal is to make it progressively harder without them realizing that it's getting harder. So the next step is doing a simulation using the math to build an electronic component. So the next thing that they do is they do this magic wand. And what it is, it's a perpetual motion device. So when they wave it, this image pops up. So what they have to do is they have to solder it. And then they have to program an image uh, into the device. And then they have to test it. Uh, then they use a simulator and then they test it, they actually build it, and then they start waving it. And then they're realizing, what? This isn't bad at all. And I go, look, look what you just did. You, you designed a device, you programmed it, you did a little bit of math, and now you have this really cool wand that could show you know, like a real simple picture of whatever you wanted to show. So then we start building up. So then the next project is a voting machine. They go on, they actually design this voting machine with a breadboard, so now they're prototyping. Now they're calculating the different measurements that they need to do. They're creating these really complicated circuit diagrams, and it just keeps on progressing more and more and more. And then at the end, they realize, you know what? This was actually a really cool class, and I realize, they realize, that they actually have the ability to do this. And what's good about this is that from this point on, they have options. You know, and my goal for them is, to, is for them to go into technical degrees. First thing I tell them when they walk into my classroom, whether they believe it or not, uh, I want them to be engineers, I want them to be technicians, I want them to, be, to do designs that change the world, that make, makes the world better. And they realize that they have this other option now. And it's awesome because a lot of the time, I have a lot of girls in my class. And a lot of the times, they don't realize that they can do this. And when they get through this class and they're able to solder and program and, and, and uh, create designs from scratch, they decide they want to continue. So I've had a lot of students go into community college. A lot of girls go into community college and take the manufacturing courses and take the machine, machine shop courses. I have a lot of students that have gone on to college and, and majored in engineering and, and really really liked what they've been doing. So it's, it's that thing that I want them to understand. Now within my coursework, uh, this is just the first step. So they get to electronics and I say, you know what? It'd be very cool if you came back next year and we build a solar boat. What do you think about that? Ah, uh, it sounds too hard. I go, no, it's the same thing. You already know how to do the design for the circuits. We're gonna look at the mechanical parts also. You already know all these things. You're just making something bigger now. It's not this little device now. It's a whole vehicle 
that you could jump into. And they're like, okay, I'll think about it. Usually I just push them into, you know, and, you know, and tell them, you know, sometimes some of you don't have a choice. You're going to be in the class. And you can't do that. Of course I can, because I know you can do it. So I, I don't give them an option. A lot of them I don't give options. And I say, you're going to be in my AP physics course. You're going to be in the solar boat. You're going to be in the, you know, after school architecture program. You're going to be in everything. You can't do that. Of course I can. I'll sign you up. You're going to go into it. And, they, you know, and they'll, they'll do it because they want to do it, you know, and, and I'm giving them the option that, yeah, you know, these are things that you're capable of, and I know you like it. You're just, you know, you're just saying that you don't because you're trying to be the cool kid, but you like it. You know you want to be there. I'm just making you do it. Not really. They still have an option to say, no, I don't want to do it, but they end up doing it anyways. So a lot of the things that the reasons why I became a teacher and why I left engineering was that. Um, when I grew up in, in Lenox, I didn't have any of these options. I didn't know anything about anything outside of Lenox. When I had the opportunity to become an engineer and I saw what was possible, I wanted to go back and change that and change the, the outlook of you know, the, the, the kids in my community and, and give them this bigger vision of what's out there and what they're capable of. And, and I think uh, for the most part, I've, I've been somewhat successful in doing that. Um, it's been a great experience. Like I said, it, 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 teaching is the hardest, the hardest profession imaginable. I would rather, you know, doing a design, it's so much easier. Uh, but the hook for me was seeing the student's eyes. I don't know, it's like this look when they understand something. It's like, wow, I can do this. And that pushes me every day to go back into the classroom, to give them even harder projects, bring in more resources, show them that you know, it doesn't matter how difficult it is. I'm here to help. We're going to do this together. And we're going to come up with, with the solution, the design. You know, this year we're, we're building a car. Um, you know, we're building an electric car. I know a little bit about cars, but, you know, electrical cars, it's, you know, but we're going to learn together. You know, last year we built a boat. I don't know anything about boats other than riding in a boat. So the cool thing about teaching for me is uh, the students see me as, as a person and that I don't have the answers for everything. And we're working together to come up with these huge solutions to these problems. Uh, to push them forward. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not the know-all of everything. You know, I had one student tell me once, they were working on this, um, this design for my capstone engineering. They were working on design uh, a, a trash can that can sense the type of trash that you're throwing in so it could separate uh, into the correct recycling bins. And she wanted to do this programming I was like, Mr. Rivas, I need you to help me on the programming. I, I don't know how to do this. And I'm like, I don't know either. I don't know how to program that. I, I thought you were the teacher. You're supposed to know this. No, I don't know how to program. But I can find you someone that can help you with the programming. So a lot of times it's finding the resources for them. But you know, for her, that moment was like a realization that, yeah, I'm just human. I don't know everything. But I'm here to help you find the solutions to your problems. You know, and that goes, you know, within the classroom. It also extends outside of the classroom. And, and uh, you know, we end up, I have these mentoring sessions with students that come back and they share with me everything that they're doing. And, and then I, oh, Mr. Rios, well, what do you think about, should I do this, should I do that? I go, well, let's, let's, you know, let's weigh the options. So it's still that student-teacher relationship, you know, 10, 12 years later, and they've already, you know, have their own families and they've already graduated from, from college and they're doing all, and they still want to listen out you know listen to what I have to say you know I'm like I'm honored you know it's great that you that you still want to talk with me about all these ideas and I'm happy to be still a part of your life and and, and you know helping you out so that's what keeps me going back into the classroom uh, and teaching and I don't think I'll, I'll ever ever be able to to leave the classroom because of that